Okay, so we're going to review percent, part, and whole, and then solving for multiple percent. So the, one of the first things to do when you solve for percent, part, whole, it can be hard to remember what the method is to solve for percent, part, whole. So draw this triangle out, and we're going to create a little kind of like a graphic organizer that will help us remember the process. So we've got this triangle, and then we're going to put three lines. We're going to have a line kind of going across the center area here, and then we'll make like this little T we have another line coming across there, okay? At the top, we're going to write in a P, and this is going to be the part section. So I'll write that in real quick, part, and that's our part that we have right there. Now, at the bottom left, and we're going to put it in the bottom left. It would actually work if you put it on the right or the left. We'll put it right here. We're going to put a W, and this is going to be our whole section of the triangle. So we've got our whole section right over there. And then on the right, of course, we're going to put in what is missing out of three is going to be percent and it's best to draw a percent sign makes it obvious and you don't have to use the P twice we've already used it for part so we've got percent part and whole now the last thing we need is we need to figure out which operations we put them in the right place on the triangle so I'm gonna come in here and put a big division sign right under the part that means anytime we have a part and we're trying to solve for anything else we're gonna divide I'm then going to throw a multiplication sign right there in between my whole and the percent. So anytime you're presented with a percent part whole question, a question about percent, draw this triangle. If you can remember where to put the P, the W, the percent, division, multiplication, this can really help you solve these accurately. Okay? So let's try it. Let's implement this real quick. Um, we've got this here. I moved this up into the top. Didn't put these in, so I'm going to put my re-enter my division sign here and re-enter my multiplication sign, and let's solve for the part. So this is solving for the part, real quick. Quick review, Elena began a 75-mile bike ride at 8 a.m. on Saturday morning. When she stopped for a break at 9 a.m., she had biked 60% of the total bike ride distance. How far had Elena biked? So what information do we have? Elena began a 75-mile bike ride. That is the whole distance of the bike ride is 75 miles so that is the whole distance that we have after an hour of riding she took a break she biked 60 percent of the whole distance so we also have the percent so i'm writing that in what do we not have the part that's what we're solving for okay so how far has she biked so far we're solving for the part right there so in order to solve the part we're going to look at what we have we have this right here we have 75 times, you see the multiplication time, sign, I'm sorry, 75 times 60%. Now what that will look like is this, 75 times, I'm going to put 0.60. We got to remember to turn a percent into a decimal. You move the decimal point back two places, and it, uh, in this case, it turns it into 60 hundredths. So I'll set this up as 75 times 0.60. Now, it would also be acceptable to do 75 times 0.6 or 6 tenths because that is the same as 60 hundred. So this would work also either way. And then we multiply to get our answer. If you do the left way right here, you're going to get a row of zero. Zero times five is zero. Zero times seven is zero. Knock that out and we go to the six. Place in my zero. Six times five is 30. Put the zero and carry the three. Seven times six is 42. Plus three is 45. So it looks like we get 44,500, but remember our decimal place. And I usually do this at the beginning, but remember our decimal is two places over. So I've got to come back my two places, which makes my answer 45. Also on this side, if I do my, my tenths, move it over one place there, I'll multiply here for you here. Six times five is 30, put a zero, carry the three. Six times seven is 42, plus three is 45. Looks like 450. But I come back my one decimal point, and the answer is 45. So Elena has biked 45 miles in that hour. That is the part that she biked right there, okay? Let's try for the percent. So now what if we need to find the percent value? Again, I've got my triangle up here. If you don't have it, you can always just draw it real quick. It doesn't take a lot of time on your paper. Really helps with the accuracy. Chris Madrid's has a sign, if you don't know that's a restaurant, hamburger place, Chris Merdids has a sign by the front door that says maximum occupancy 60 people. What percentage of the capacity is 
12 people. Okay, cool. So what do we have? Maximum occupancy, the whole value, the total number of people is allowed in there is 60 people. Okay. What percentage of the capacity is 12 people? We're solving for the percentage. So, hey, what if there's just 12 people in there? What percentage would that be? The way I've written this in my triangle, it's kind of going from here to there, which is 12, divided by 60. 12 divided by 60. The part, the top number, always goes inside the box. And I know that always looks weird to students because it's the smaller number most of the time. But that's the way you do it because you get a decimal answer that you turn into a percent. I'm going to make 12.0. Always put the decimal point and put a zero afterwards because you're going to get a lot of decimals when you work with percents, okay? Now we just set this up and we divide, and it's actually not going to be that tricky. 60 does not go into 1, of course. 60 doesn't go into 12. 12 is smaller than 60, so that's not going to work either. However, 60 does go into 120, okay? And it actually goes in evenly two times if you know your 60s. 60 times 2 is exactly 120. So I put 120, 120. When you subtract, this zeroes out. And it looks like, real quick, that the answer is 0 0.2. However, remember, we're solving for percent. So we need to, when you take a decimal and you turn it into a percent, you move the decimal point back to the right two places, okay? So what this really turns into is 20 or 20%. 20 so at Chris Madrid, at this restaurant, if there were 12 people inside, that's 20% of the maximum occupancy for that restaurant. That's what we just solved for, okay? Let's try this last one here anyways for the triangle. It's calculating the whole value. And this one can be the trickiest one, I think. Um, let's look at the question. 40 students were physically present at YMLA on Tuesday. If this was 8% of the total school population, how many students are registered at YMLA? So how many total? We're solving for the whole, okay? So it says 40 students, just a part of the total, were present at YMLA. That's where I'm getting that information. And this was 8%. So my percent, I'll put in my 8%. And then we need to solve. And I'm going to kind of circle out over here. And what I forgot to do, sorry guys, is write in my division. Not super neat, but you get the gist of it. And then my multiplication. So this is 40 divided by... 8% basically is how you solve this. 40 divided by 8%. So again, 40 is going to go inside the box. I put 40 inside the box. Remember, 40.0 works better to do it that way. And you're going to divide by 8%. Now, here's why this is tricky. A lot of people will put the 8 there and say, hey, that's 8%. But remember, it's not. 8% needs to be converted to a decimal, okay? So 8% looks like this. But I need to move back two places. To turn a percent to a decimal, you move the decimal point back two spaces to the left, and it actually turns this into 0 0.08, okay? So I'll erase in here, and I'm actually dividing 40 by 0 0.08. Now, when you divide with decimals, here's another reason this is tricky. You can't divide. You've got to turn your decimal out here on the outside basically into a whole number. We need to move this decimal all the way over, okay? Well, I moved it over. How many places did I move it over? Two spaces. So I've got to match it over here. I've got to go one, two spaces there. Let me straighten out my line here. And that brings my decimal right there. Sorry. Fill in my zero. And now I basically turn this into, hey, what is 80 or what is 4,000 divided by 8 when we do this? Decimal point can come up, and we're just kind of remembering our rules of dividing with decimals, okay? So 8 does not go into 4. 4 is smaller than 8. That doesn't work. But guess what? 8 does go into 40. It goes in evenly 5 times, okay? So 8 times 5 is 40. And you're going to see we're going to get a bunch of zeros now because when you subtract 40 minus 40, you get 0. Bring down a 0. 8 can't go into 0. Uh, 8 times 0 again, we get 0. 
Um, we zero this out, and we're going to get another zero in here, which tells us this, gentlemen, that the answer is 500. If I can write it in neatly, 500. And what does that mean? That means that there are 500 total students enrolled at the school, 500. 40 students were in school on Tuesday, which was 8%. The answer we're looking for was 500, okay? So what if we get multiple percents then? What if we get a question and they ask about finding more than 1% of that? Let's look at that real quick and try it. We're still going to use our same triangle because that will help with um, the memorization of the process. And let's check this out. During the first part of a hike, Andre drank four pints of the water he brought. Four pints of the water he brought. Okay, that's probably a part. That's not all of the water he bought. That's just part of what he brought. If this is 40%, let's look at A first. If this is 40% of the water he brought, how much water did he bring? So they're asking for a total. And then B says if he drank 75% of his water in the entire hike, how much did he drink? Okay, let's solve A and then we'll go to B. So we know four is the part because he drank during the first part of the hike, Andre drank four pints of the water he brought. Okay, if this is 40% of the water he brought, how much did he bring? Well, here's the percent, 40%. So we're solving for the whole first. We're going to figure out how much total water Andre brought on this hike. So we're going to do the part divided by the percent. Or we're going to say, hey, what is 4? And like I said, this might look weird at first, but it's going to work. 4, or 4.0, divided by 40%, gentlemen, 40%. Remember the percent, you've got to bring this back to spaces. So it's dividing by like point 40, okay? Now remember, we got to come back with our decimal point when we divide, which means we have to move it two spaces there too. So I have 400, and now it's like, hey, what's 400 divided by 40? And this will work out pretty easily because uh, 40 does not go into 4, of course, but 40 goes into itself one time, and then 40 times 1 is erase out. I get 40, and we subtract. 0, 0, bring down a 0, and then guess what? It's going to be 10. And so the answer I'm getting is 10. How much did Andre bring? He brought 10 pints of water, and that's basically your answer for A. Okay. B says if he drank 75% of his water in the entire hike, how much did he drink? Well, if we want to figure out what 75% of 10 is, if we know now that the whole is 10 and he drank 75% of that, we just multiply. What is 10 times? Now remember, 10 times. And we have to turn 75% into a decimal, which is 2 back. 10 times 0.75. And I'm going to have a ton of space here, but we do the multiplication. Move it over two spaces. 5 times 0 is 0. 5 times 1 is 5. Good. Um, done with that. Put my 0 there. 2 times 0 is 0. And then, um, oh, that's a 7. Sorry, what am I doing? That is a 7 times 0 is 7. Thank you, thank you. 7 times 1 is 7. And basically what you end up with is 750. I'm running out of space, but you got to come back to spaces. So the answer for B is that um, Andre here drank 7.5 pints of his water. He brought 10, he drank 7.5 pints, okay? And that's the just for multiple percents, okay? So this will lead you kind of into your, your individual activity. Sorry, it's a little blurry on the question, but very similar to this. It says, last Sunday, 1,200 people visited the amusement park. 60% of the visitors were adults, 16% were teenagers. The rest were children ages 12 and under. Find the number of children ages 12 and under that visited the park. Again, division sign, multiplication, our method, okay? We have a whole. It says last Sunday, 1,200 people visited the park, okay? 60% of the visitors were adults. 16 were teenagers. So we actually need to solve for two different things. 
First off, let's figure out how many were adults. We need 60%. So to do that, we're going to say, hey, what's 1,200 times 0.60 and multiply this thing out when we solve that out. Remember, your decimal comes over two spaces. And you're going to do all this multiplication. I'll tell you in the interest of time, when you multiply this, it's going to be 720. So adults is going to be 720 people. Okay, multi-step question here. But we also need to solve for teenagers. So when we solve for teenagers, we need to come back and say, hey, the total number is still 1,200, but 16% are teenagers. So to solve for that, we would say, hey, what's 1,200 times 0.16? Remember how we turn that percent to a decimal? Move the decimal over two spaces here and then multiply. When you do this, I'll tell you just in the interest of time to kind of make this a little faster on the video, it's going to be 192. And I put A there. It actually should be T for teenagers. So we know 720 were adults. We know 192 were teenagers. The question says, and the rest were children ages 12 and under. Find the number of children ages 12 and under that visited the park. Great. So to find the number that were uh, ages 12 and under, we first need to probably add what we have for teenagers and adults, and then we subtract it from the total. Um, 720 plus 192 is some pretty quick addition. We add this thing up. 0 and 2 is 2. 9 and 2 is 11. Carry the 1. 7, 8, 9 is 912. So what that means is not the answer, but that means that 912 is how many teenagers and adults we had at the park, 912. Well, if we take 912, subtract it from 1,200, straight subtraction, get the final answers. Now, be careful subtracting with all the zeros. You do need to borrow here, make that a 1, make that a 9, borrow from that there, and get a 10 there. 10 minus 2 is 8. 9 minus 1 is 8. You cannot do 1 minus 9 over here, so we actually need to borrow from that 1,000 right over there. And then 11 minus 9 is 2. Final answer, gentlemen, 288 people were children under the ages of 12 or 12 and under, okay? So just some basics on percent review and then solving questions with multiple percents. Uh, great job.